and welcome to Connect. I'm Pastor Abby and today we're talking about the character of God. Now last time we talked a little bit about our relationship with God and how the way we perceive God and the way we perceive His character really shapes our relationship with Him. In fact, people who perceive God as an angry or unforgiving God uh, end up having a real wedge in their relationship with Him because of their lack of understanding. So as people of God, it's critical that we read the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament as a whole to help uh, create that perspective inside of us of the character of God, who God is at the very core. We could take stories from the Old Testament such as uh, uh, someone who was stoned for doing something so minor in the Old Testament. Or we could take a look at stories where uh, the people of God were brought into exile because of their sin. And, and there was famines and, and a lot of uh, destructive things happened to them. And we could take those stories and use them to uh, create an image of God as an angry and unforgiving God. But doing that does not do justice to the heart of God, doesn't give justice to the character of God. Some of us also can look at the Old Testament as two distinct parts, and we do. We have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. Now a lot of people seem to think the God, the God of the Old Testament was mean and angry and unforgiving, but the God of the New Testament is kind and loving and forgiving. But we serve a God who never changes. In fact, Hebrews 13a says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now what do we know about Jesus? Jesus was a direct reflection of God. The character Jesus showed was the character of his father God. So from that, we know that God never changes. The, the forgiving, loving God that we see in the New Testament is the same forgiving, loving God as the Old Testament. And so as we look at the entire Bible as a whole, what we see is God longing to be in a relationship with his people. That's the whole story. A God who loves his creation so much that he wants to be in relationship. In fact, we see very clearly in the Old Testament that God would grieve the decay of that relationship. In 2 Samuel 14, 14, we do see a piece of God's heart. It says this, God does not just sweep life away. Instead, he devises ways to bring us back when we've been separated from him. Now, I love that word, devises. That means he's not just looking, he's not just trying, Devising tells me he's using every resource, every thought to find a way to bring us back into relationship with him. He refuses to just sweep us aside, to write us off. That's the heart of God in the Old Testament. In Ezekiel 34 verses 11 and 12, it says this, For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search and find my sheep. I will be like a shepherd looking for his scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places they were scattered on that dark and cloudy day. There you begin to see that character of God, that longing to be in relationship with his people, longing that, wall, that the wall that was erected between a God and his people would be destroyed. And he fulfilled this longing for restored friendship when he sent Jesus into the world. And that came to God at a very, very high cost. 
Jesus walked this earth as a living example of God. He even says in the New Testament, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. So basically, if you've seen my character, the character of Jesus, you've seen my Father's character, the character of God. So by looking at the nature of Jesus, we automatically see the nature of God. So what was Jesus like? Well, there's one story that beautifully shows the character and the heart of Jesus so clearly, and that is the story of the woman caught in adultery. That's found in the book of John, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. Why don't you read along with me? It says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, my Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. What a beautiful picture of the heart of God. People had lined up around this woman, ready to stone her. And I can imagine how sure they were that they had trapped Jesus, the Son of God, that he was going to choose one extreme or the other. He was going to choose to cover up the sin and say it was no big deal, or he was going to choose to go ahead and stone and show judgment and harsh become harsh. And Jesus found the middle ground. He found the ground of forgiveness, but empowering to change. And by saying, he who has never sinned, throw the first stone. Jesus showed that it is, living a holy life is important, but that forgiveness is there along with us. Now I can only imagine why the young men waited for the old men. The old men were the teachers of the younger men. The old men were the ones who told, instructed the young, younger men on how to live righteously. So I'm expecting that the younger men thought, well, I'm not without sin, but I bet you my mentor, my leader is. But once the old men dropped their stones, realizing that even they were in need of forgiveness, the young men knew that they had no ability. And then we see the heart of Jesus. Jesus, the only one in that crowd who could have picked up a stone and thrown it. Yet, he didn't. He didn't touch that stone. He knew that forgiveness was the way to go. He knew that forgiveness was the heart of God. He shared such a love for this woman that he wanted to see her free. You know, if you had to sum up the entire nature of God in one word, that word would be love. In Romans 5 verse 8, it says this, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us, and this is the most important part, while we were still sinners. God, the perfect Father, he, he can't even be in the same room as sin, had such a longing to be reunited with his creation that he was willing to give up his son as a sacrifice so we would have a way to be with him again. 
Not only did he do that when we loved him, but he, he, he sent his son while we still hated him. Now I know there might be somebody out there who's willing to die for a very good person, but you're going to have a very difficult time finding somebody to die for another who hates them. But that's what God sent his son to do. That's always been the heart of God from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He is a loving God. He is a saving God and he wants to know you. His love towards you will never change. It's always extended to you. Now accepting that love is always our choice, is always your choice. But the extension of that love will never end. The extension of that love is the very nature of God. Well, thank you for listening today. If you're in your small group, I would encourage you to just uh, discuss this story and, and talk about just that character of God. I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to be together, to talk about your word, and to just uh, dig deeper into your character. We thank you that, God, as we come together, you are in our midst. Lord God, I thank you for wisdom that comes from your word. I thank you for a revelation that comes as we study your words. We thank you for a blessing on each family, each person who's watching. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.